Hey guys, welcome to today's Train Sim TV video. Here we are on the Painting and Dartmouth Steam Railway from Golden Goldsmith Scenarios. We're going to take a look at a scenario that is just released that Jason has just released on on Thompson Simulation, and that is the 1630 Painting to Kinsway, but using the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 37 Pack Volume 2, featuring 6975 from that very pack. As it says on the screen, we've got that scenario briefing. Complete the runaround procedure at Painton before proceeding for, before departing with the 1630 service to Kingsway. Call all stations along the way. After terminating at Kingsway, have the local and couple then move up to offers to complete the run. Time table is Painton 1630, Goodwin Stand 1635, Cherston 1645, Greenway Halt 1650, Kingsway at 5 o'clock. And it says there that we've obviously we've got some manual points in this area. So first of all we need to set our local up here, we're in the north end of Paintons Bay platform I guess here, uh, the Paintons Dartmouth Railway platform. Of course the mainline station is just behind the building here, uh, and you can hear some paces over the back there. This, pa this station itself is actually known as Queen's Park if I remember rightly, namely because of the park over there on the left, and uh, where they play cricket and stuff like that, for anyone that cares about the fact that they play cricket on there. So let's get this thing set up and ready to go. We're just moving this forward over these points and then we're going to do the run round procedure. So I just need to pull off that. We've got the head coat blind on but we've also still got a tail light on there so let's get that taken off. So it's a lovely BR Blue 37 with the small logo. Still with its buffer cowans and everything as well, which is quite nice to see. And I said I'd change some points and I didn't actually check whether I needed to or not, but I didn't. So it's all good. Of course, we've got the lovely Devon Bell Observation Saloon here, which we'll look at in detail in a few minutes' time. Just want to get this run around done first because we've only got six minutes to your way. And I don't want to destroy Leaden Manor either behind us there. I'm just getting behind the ground signal that's down here on the floor. We go. I'm just going to take my cursor off the screen as well before I do anything further because uh, I don't want to be capturing that really. You can hear the sound of a game of cricket. We haven't got a game of cricket on, we've got rugby posts. So we'll have a look around the station and everything in a few minutes once I've done this shunt manoeuvre. Uh, I might stay in this cab actually for the shunt. Probably shouldn't but I'm going to do anyway. Lovely uh, mana class from Steam Sound Supreme there right in front of us as well. So we got the road already set because it's a, an automatic point. They're actually control from a ground frame here at Paint and I believe it is. So let's set back through the run around loop. And then we can perform our shunt manoeuvre. Which will be to then get the loco on the right end of the train. Tight fit down the end of this headshot. As I say, we'll have a look at the uh, observation car. Lovely looking thing. Uh, when we've coupled up and everything. Should have a minute or two to just set stuff up. Got the signal. Just giving a blast on the horn there as we're coming down here, because you can see. Got some orange dudes down here. Normally, of course, these services on the painting down, I don't get to. Uh, 37 orange, it's very rare to get loco orange on this branch. It's certainly a nice surprise when you do, so that was what made me jump out and uh, download the scenarios because it's not a route I've ever actually driven in TS. Other than the 1950s version, and the chance to drive it with this fantastic 37 pack wall, too good to turn down. I've, I've gone through a stop board there, haven't I? Well, we've got the we've got the board, so it's fine. Right, so we need to change the points so we can couple onto the train. There we go. And put the low coins forward. Another blast on the horn, and then we can move forward and couple up now. So we got about two and a half minutes to wood you off. I love the features of like the people with cameras and stuff sort of dotted about.
That was a sudden stop. Oh, we've had a bit of a, an incident there. Turns out the, the nose of 37 is longer than I thought it was. This guy's captured it all on his camera, it's alright. He won't tell anybody, I'm sure. As we're coupled on, now we need to press T to open the doors and then we can change cab. So what we need to do is shut down this cab first. Put the reverser to off. Take out the master key. Then we need to put the AWS changeover to off. Make sure the loco brake is released, but then put the train brake by holding R to lift the pin and put it right off into the off position. So that's this cab shut down. Change ends. Put this end into forward, and we also need to change the brakes because I suspect we should be running on vacuum in here. So let's change the brakes to passenger vacuum. Reversing forward, now we need to do the lights again, so we're going to take off the... Put on the instrument light, because we've got a tunnel. Put on the route indicator and take off the tail lights. Uh, and then of course we're going to get some windows open for the thrash. And how lovely does that look? Nice. Very pretty. So yeah, this route available, as I said, from Golden Goldsmith Studios. The Golden Goldsmith scenarios, okay. <laughs> Can't even get the name right. The uh, main parts of the station obviously come from the Paint and Dart, from the uh, Riviera line um, and the Riviera 50s route. But Jason has been amazing in putting a lot more extra little details and stuff into the route, and especially, obviously, adding the section down to Kingsbury, as we're going to see. So it's brought a lot more life to it. Even at this painting area that we're in at the moment, it's brought more life to it. I said we're going to come down and have a look at this. This is the observation car that we're using today. This comes from Matrix Trains. I'm not quite sure what's going on the roof, whether that's actually part of the model or if I've got a bit of a barked install there, but pretty nice model all the same. It's nice to see observation cars in there. It's the first time I've actually downloaded this, but it certainly uh, represents what I've, I remember going on when I've been to the Paint and Dartmouth. And uh, if you've never done the Paint and Dartmouth Railway, I do highly recommend taking a ride in that observation car. You've got to pay a couple of quid extra. Um, but in both directions it's, it adds a lot to the journey because in the outward journey as you are now you can obviously travel in here and get some fantastic views as we'll see as we're going along the line um, but when you're going in the other direction with a steam loco or even with 37 to be fair but if you're going with a steam loco in the other direction uh, and the chimney's right up against that um, observation car it's a really disturbing sight Again, to see the front of a steam loco as it's working hard, it's, especially in the tunnel, it's pretty beast. So I certainly highly recommend that if you ever get the chance to come down to this railway. It's a pretty unusual sort of railway, really. It's um, one that you don't really often hear much about, and that's because I suppose they don't do... Most railways obviously do galas and stuff, and the painting down with, for about 25 years, or certainly just over 20 years, They've really not bothered to do galas and stuff like that. They're not an, they're not an enthusiast orientated route, um, like most route, most um, preserved railways are. Never have been because their focus obviously is on the tourism industry, uh, being with the area that it's in and everything. It's very much second best in terms of the enthusiast. They don't need that sort of input or anything. They survive on the thriving tourist industry and trade that they've got down there. Because obviously it's part of the round robin stuff and the boats from Dartmouth can get up to Totnes and you can go on the South Devon Railway. Yada, yada, yada. So the trains are always pretty busy, but they're always pretty busy with uh, tourist folks. Needless to say, though, you know, having said that, it's, it's still a fantastic experience and I've always found their staff you know, friendly and everything, so... Highly recommend it for a doubt if you're in the area. It's quite pricey for the length of the line. I mean, it's uh, if you get a ticket in real life, it's only seven miles. It's quite an expensive ticket. But what we did when I've been with my fiance, um, what we really enjoyed doing as we depart from Paynton, Queen's Park, was actually going on the steamship, the Kingsway Castle, down in Tot uh, Dartmouth. So we went out on the train from Paynton to Kingsway, and then we went on the Kingsway Castle steamship. 
uh, up to Totnes and back. And that was a fantastic full day out for us. And I'm not sure if it was like 32 quid each or something like that. Maybe it was more. I can't remember. 32 quid rings a bell though. But I highly, highly recommend that if you're in the area. It's uh, a really worthwhile day out. Of course, this is, as it's known, or certainly was known, uh, the English Riviera. So we're in the English Riviera, the Jewel of Britain, the Jewel of Devon, as we get towards, well, I suppose team is known as the Jewel of Devon, but um, as we get towards Dartmouth, we end up in the really pretty parts of Devon, you know, where it's really quite rural on those cliffs and stuff like that down that end. Obviously here we're still in Tor Bay, which is known as the English Riviera. And you can see from the, the sidings on the right there just how busy this place once was. You know, you're talking about up to the 80s, even even into the 90s. You've got quite a lot of local trains and stuff coming here. Of course, you still get services from Paddington these days and still voyages and stuff going there, I believe. To reverse and stuff. But you can tell from how those sidings are just how much local traffic used to come here. So you've got quite a climb as well, it's a good challenging route. 1 in 78 at the moment, so let's have a, a listen to the 37. We're already arriving here into Goodrington. Goodrington. This is Goodrington Sands. So from here the line climbs quite steeply then to Churston. This is just the first sort of uh, little stop on the route. Small station. The second platform, I don't know if it ever has had use in, in you know, the preserved either. This is obviously where the Key West um, whilst the slides and everything are. Now because Jason obviously is a freeway route and he's not had any investment and stuff like that and he's not had any custom assets made for him so you know obviously that's just represented as best it can be. It would have been down to DCG to have done that model. So uh, that's obviously missing but otherwise it's pretty spot on. Especially with the beach and everything. I love the the beach hut scene and all the people on the beach. Cracking. Used to spend many happy hours here myself when I was a kid. So over there, you can't see it in TS, but over there you got Torquay and Paintings here in the middle. And then over that way you got Brixham Head over there in the distance. And as I say, from here it's quite a steep climb up. So I'll have another listen to the 37 as we're getting up out of here. It should be a good little standing start. See what passenger views we've got here actually. Now we've got this one here. So these are also repainted coaches. These are the paint and down with reskin coaches that you can get from uh, Gordon Goldsmith. overloaded it there. So we're going for the, there's a classic shot up here on the hill. I love the detail that's been put in here. Is that, some really clever use of assets as well. There are drain blocks that have been placed on each other to make steps. So that's really uh, smart boot building there. Obviously you've got a bit of a TS issue over there. You can't really do anything about that. So I'll miss that bit off. So 
So yeah, we're on the climb now. It's 1 in 80. As you saw, skirt of idle on the cliffs now, all the way up to Churston, and then it goes over a viaduct. Um, and eventually through to the Dark Valley side. But yeah, we climb quite steeply now, right above the cliff edge. And again, for anybody that's not actually visited it, it's a cracking place to go. And this is a lovely bit of hoop building that's gone on here as well. So yeah, the pain and Dartmouth, I mean, the... As I said, it's quite rare to see these 37s actually get used. Because they don't tend to use their diesel locos at all, maybe one, two weekends a year. Uh, another tra train of lights season, at the end of the season, and other special events, they usually get the diesels out for that, if like there's an actual carnival or something. But generally speaking, they don't tend to use their diesels because they are advertised as a steam railway. Now this curve is where I've been on a, a Torbe Express back in well, around 2004. And I think it was Union of South Africa we were behind actually stalled here. Uh, and ended up having to get rescued by... I think it was one of their large prior tanks. I can't remember if I've been behind for two or three steam locos that have stalled on this line. Union of South Africa definitely was behind. I believe I was behind Tammy the day that stalled on here as well. And again we got rescued there. And I've got a sneaking suspicion that the King even managed to stall climbing up here with the Torbay Express, which of course is like a 11 coach train, so it's a little bit heavier than what we've got here. We're on a pretty light train in comparison. But it's certainly a challenging gradient, especially in wet conditions. We're going to have a little look from the observation saloon. A few different seating positions. Is that Broad Sands down there? I think that's Broad Sands, that beach down there. Because you're coming up on the hill now as we go up towards us, Churston, and you can see Loco around in front. I think it was here I've stalled behind. Uh, Tam maybe in real life on this curve I seem to recall and in both occurrences I seem to remember that the other service, their service, the painted down of service, the loco came off at Churston actually came down and rescued us on both occasions I think the King might have got itself going again I can't honestly recall it's over 15 years ago in both instances, instances. I think this is Broadsons Viaduct if I remember rightly it's not an area I've been to massively amounts in I mean massive amounts in recent years. We used to go on family holidays down to Devon an awful lot, uh, specifically. Until about 2000 we used to go down to Dawlish, uh, but my parents bought her uh, down to Torquay, sorry. A place called the Wheat Ridge Hotel. Uh, it was near... Is it Preston it's called the place? Just outside, just west of Torquay Station. So I've got a couple of things floating on the left now. I don't have the Corisol installed, unfortunately, so I believe I'm probably missing a few bits from that. Although I've not seen many milk balls and stuff. So I'm just coming into Churston. Of course, the reason mainline steam tours can run here is because of that there turntable. Which isn't the biggest turntable in the world, as Princess Elizabeth... Uh, found out about 13 years ago. Princess Elizabeth came down on a steam tour and they actually had to move a fence to turn it. But otherwise, that turntable has proved massively useful over the years. Loving some of these assets here. This is, uh, as I said, this is Churston Station that we're coming into. Let's have a little look from outside. Again, the railway doesn't stick with the uh, preserved railway look. Like many lines use semaphores and stuff, obviously. As you can see, the paint and Dartmouth use colour lights. Presumably for, you know, operational ability. I mean, they don't have to have any signal boxes by doing that. I think they have a signal box at 
Uh, is this one control from Britannia Crossing based on the B on the board there? I'm not honestly sure. But they have a, a crossing box down at Britannia Crossing, which is at Kings near Kingswear, and then they have a ground signal, uh, ground points and stuff, a ground frame at uh, Paynton, Queens Park. They don't have like a signal box here. Obviously, this was your traditional preserved railway. They would have a, a signal box here at Churston and semaphores everywhere, uh, but not this line. So this is actually where the line to Brixham used to go off as well. There used to be a branch to Brixham go off here. Uh, that shut in the 1960s, I believe. No, oh, the shunter's moving out. I didn't notice that. As always with uh, one of Jason's scenarios, you can guarantee you're going to get some interesting manoeuvres and stuff. That's cool to see. I think we've got a steam loco coming the other way as well. Which will be facing... It's facing this way, that's nice. So we'll be able to get a, sc a screenshot here of that actually coming in. So this is a service from Kinswear. A full two train service operating, obviously. Oh. Wonder what happened then. I thought something drastic had happened. It's just shut the regulator, obviously. TSAI being what it is. Seventy-eight twenty, I believe. So we're just waiting for the right away. Not drop till 46. From here it's sort of level and then we get to the summit just sort of around the corner in a minute. Uh, and then the line drops all the way down to Kinswear. Which again is a, a pretty challenging climb back in the other direction. We have got Greenway Holt uh, to stop at uh, 1648, 1650 before we get to Kinswear. Uh, Greenway Holt is where the Payton and Dam have built a little uh, platform about 10 years ago, maybe just over, nearly 15 years ago I suppose now and uh, made it so people could, instead of like getting on buses and stuff and going all the way to Agatha Christie's I can't remember if it was a holiday home or a holiday home or an actual home I think it was a holiday home because her, I've, I've been to Chelsea to actually do some spotting over there and I've seen there's a grave there with Agatha Christie on it so I guess she must have been from around that area near Didcot uh, so I suspect it must have been a, a holiday home or something Either way, people can go and visit it, if they're that way out. Never done it myself, not my sort of interest, but uh, they actually built a station there. It's actually a good station. If you want to see steam working hard, you can get them coming out of the tunnel if on a rail tour or whatever. I've been there for Royal Scott, and it was quite impressive seeing it coming bursting out of the tunnel and uh, through the little hole there. Because it's just quite a steep gradient. So we're just waiting for the right away. Should be getting that in a moment. Cause we're in the wrong end of the loco. I was going to look out on the train, but we're in the wrong end. There we go. We got the right way. Of course, 37275, which is what we're on here, uh, wasn't always based at the Painting Dam. I think it only actually came to this line a couple of years ago. It used to be at the South Devon. 
and I think they did a swap deal with the 25 that used to be at this railway, if I remember rightly. Like, I think that's correct. Um, so it's nice to have a 37 on it, that's for sure. Because it has to work a downside higher, harder here than it ever did on the South Devon line because of the gradients on this route. So they use the 37, like I say, for special events. They also use these 37s and you know, their diesel loco for um, engineers trains and stuff that they run. I've seen, in, when they had the 25 running, I've seen the 25 doing bits. Some cracking detail in the farm fields and everything. Love it. It's really capturing that sort of feel of Devon. We've come from the coast and now we're going out into the Rowan Hills. I've got my frame rates locked to 30, so you won't see any difference of anywhere. I'm not seeing any issues or anything. It's, it's all running very nicely. So hats off to uh, Jason for that. So we're going through the cutting now. This is where Churston Summit is. Just give me a little bit of power as we're coming up over the top. So we come over the summit now, then we go down, as I said, through Greenway Holt. And then we go through Greenway Tunnel, which is one of the longest tunnels on a preserved railway. It's not the longest. If I remember right, like the longest one is on the Langoflin Railway. I think this might be the second longest. I'm trying to think if it's longer than Foley Park Tunnel on the Seven Valley or not. It's certainly more eventful than Foley Park in terms of the gradient and everything, because this is, as you can see now, we're on a 1 in 72. 164. I've forgotten that we're stopping. Um, you see a ground signal there, actually. That's quite interesting. You get a ground signal just on a random piece of track like this. So I guess in real life you stop with the brake coach on the platform. Which is uh, not happening today. We've just got some coaches in the platform, hopefully one of them will select. Yep, there we go. So we can unload passengers here. Loving the ambient sounds and everything, it really captures the sort of feel of the area. They use an old van here as a, as a little waiting shelter, if I remember rightly. I've only been once before. But as I said, it's a great location to come if you want to see steam working hard, because when they come blasting out of there, they really are going for it. It's weird, I've not really heard much about this route in the community, it's, it's proven to be a very scenic drive. I think it's the same as in real life, you don't really hear much about the painting in Dartmouth. I think the most notable thing the painting in Dartmouth really have done in recent years is, was it not them that came up with the idea for the train of lights? If I remember in right, I think it was them that came up with that, or certainly were one of the first to run it, before every other railway obviously jumped on it because it's a great idea. I do remember seeing the 37 uh, on those trains. I guess it would be Christmas 2018, I think. Either 2018 or 2019, anyway, I think. So now we do drop really steeply through the forest, essentially, all the way down into Kinsrea. Now this is always my favourite bit in real life. Because you get the really lovely views as you're coming down in real life along here, as you're coming out of the trees and everything. You sort of seeing Dartmouth appearing on the right and everything. I can't think of any more sort of scenic preserved railways than the painting in Dartmouth. And it's some really good challenging gradients as well for, you know, loco sound and stuff. It's just a shame that the railway, obviously, as I said before, is not angled towards enthusiasts in the slightest. It's not that they're nasty to enthusiasts or anything like that. I've never had any trouble on here. It's just not an enthusiast railway. Cracking views down there, though. Look at the detail that Jason's put in with the boats and stuff. That's really cool. Some really posh houses down here. 
Well, yeah, unless I'm mistaken, I think the painting and armor actually runs on a an actual full staff rather than volunteers. You know, reliant. I think they actually uh, a fully paid staff. If not in most departments, certainly I think, I'm, or rather, if not in all departments, certainly most of them. I'm really liking this route. An enjoyable, chilled out evening for me as it is here. Sat driving it. It's nice to actually do a driving video because I haven't done one for a while. So again we're dropping one in the 60 all the way down. It's always a good bit when you're coming back in the other direction, especially on a, a rail tour or whatever. Because I've been on quite a few where they've, they've gone for it coming up here. The issue they have sometimes on this section is because it's so lined with trees and stuff. I've known quite a few times they've had, you know, uh, fires, quite big ones on this hillside. Because uh, it's quite difficult to get to. The only road is up somewhere probably in front of us, just there in those trees or where those bushes are. Yeah, you just see it there, where the fence line is. That's the only road to actually get in to this area. A truly unique place, actually, Dartmouth, in terms of how you get into it. From this side, you've got to actually use a ferry. There is no bridge across the river. Uh, the nearest bridge to actually get over to the other side from here is at Totnes, which is a good, I'm guessing, seven or eight miles up the river. So you actually use... There's two ferries in Dartmouth that you can use. There's the upper ferry and the lower ferry. The one at this end is more used for cars, whereas the one at the bottom is more suited to pedestrians. Although both will take cars. Um, it makes down for a nice place out. You know, a nice place for a day out. There's not that much over there. There's a few cafes and stuff like that, and all quite highly priced as well. A lot of them. Uh, but you can walk down to Dartmouth Castle and stuff, and. For me, the biggest thing to do is just go on a boat ride or something. There's various, you know, boat trips that you can go on. Ba basically, what I'm doing is just a promotional video for the tourist board. I should be getting paid for that. But seriously, it's a really nice place to come. I actually prefer it over here to you know, spending time on the, in inverted commas, English Riviera, because these days that's just a bit meh for me. It's really deteriorated over the years. You know, talking and that. So we are coming down into Dartmouth, Dartmouth, Dartmouth now. You got all the various bits on the other side. You got the car ferries and stuff, which would run from here normally. Obviously, it's, yes, not exactly here, but the car ferry would run across to the other side. You can see Kinsway now as well in the distance. Great stuff. I'm not sure if we've got a red signal if we're not sure. I can see a red signal, I'm not sure if it's ours or not. Oh, we've got a yellow. I can see a yellow now. I'm guessing that must be ours. Looks like there's a rail tower because I can see a 37. Perhaps it was a case that there was a 37 rail tower and they put a service on with 37 on as well. I'm not sure if it's based on a real service day or not. Either way, that's been a really enjoyable little run as we come down into Kingsway. Really nice detail. Even got the slipways and stuff. Get a shot with both 37s on if I can. All three in one shot. I 
Give me an old ugly mole bat at. So here we are, we're arriving into Kingsbury. Which is the end of our journey from Paynton. So this is where you would get on the lower ferry as well, just past the end of the platform, literally. You used to be able to get a decent meal in the pub on beyond the station, but I think that's shut, from what I remember, these days. I'm not going to press T because I don't want the scenario to just end. Uh, I know we're supposed to pour off and stuff, but I'd rather just leave it with the loco here as it is. Really enjoyed that. Again, some really nice detail down here with the tools that uh, Golden Goldsmith Jason had at his disposal. Really nice work. So, yeah, you can see how close the sea still is. In reality, the land's quite a difference in terms of if you went around the coast, where it's quite a long way. Uh, but we've cut through the hill, obviously, from Churston. Really nice work, though. Enjoyed that. So don't forget, you can download this scenario from Alan, Som Alan Thompson Sim. It was uploaded by Jason a couple of days ago, or yesterday, I was ever record this. The route itself, again, comes from Golden Goldsmith Scenarios website. That'll be in the description below. The 37 is from Armstrong Powerhouse, and the stock comes on Golden Goldsmith. It's the reskins of the AP Mark 1 pack, and then the back one is one of the Matrix Trains Pullman's cars. Uh, set one, I think it is. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Please do hit subscribe, drop us a like, drop us a comment. Appreciate your feedback as always. Don't forget, you can check Tom out. He's usually on Twitch. Usually, I say usually. It varies what days he's on, but you can keep up to date on Facebook with uh, everything that we're doing and when Tom's going to be going live. He always posts on the day. And you can also see him on Twitch as well. It's twitch.tv forward slash trainsim underscore TV. Cheers very much for watching, guys. Thank you. Bye.